Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to 1 third x times y minus 2 squared. Find the particular solution y equals f of x to the given differential equation with the initial condition f of 1 is equal to 0. First, let's separate the variables. I want to bring all of the y's onto the left-hand side. So I'm going to divide both sides by y minus 2 squared. So I will have 1 over y minus 2 squared dy. And then if I multiply both sides by x, I will have 1 third x dx. Or sorry, multiply both sides by dx. And then I will have 1 third x dx on the right-hand side. Then I can integrate. To integrate this one on the left side, I am going to need to use u substitution. I will say let u be equal to y minus 2. This means that du dy will be equal to 1 because the derivative of y minus 2 is just 1. So du will be equal to dy. So I can rewrite this as the integral of 1 over u squared du, or the integral of u to the power of negative 2 du. This will be u to the power of negative 1 over negative 1. And that's all going to be equal to 1 third times x squared over 2 plus c. Then I can plug in something for u. I can plug back in y minus 2 for u. So it will be negative 1 over y minus 2 is equal to 1 sixth x squared plus c. Now that I've fully integrated, I will plug in my initial condition. x will be 1 and y will be 0. So I will have negative 1 over 0 minus 2, or negative 2, is equal to 1 sixth times 1 squared plus c. So 1 half is equal to 1 sixth plus c. This means that c is equal to 1 third. Now I will rewrite the equation that I got up here, plugging in 1 third for c. Negative 1 over y minus 2 is equal to 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third. Then I just need to work to isolate y. So I will first multiply both sides by y minus 2. So negative 1 is equal to y minus 2 times 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third. Then I will divide both sides by 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third to get that y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 over 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third. Then I will add 2 to get that y is equal to 2 minus 1 over 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third. And now that I've isolated y, that would be my answer. There's a little bit of simplifying that you could do over here if you wanted to, but you don't have to on a free response question as long as you have the correct equation in an equivalent format. Now let's discuss the domain. Are there any domain restrictions going on here that we should be aware of? Well, we know that this denominator should not be equal to zero. So let's say 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third should not be equal to zero. This means that 1 sixth x squared should not equal negative 1 third, and then if we multiply both sides by 6, we get that x squared should not be equal to negative 2. However, if we try to take the square root of negative 2, you can't take the square root of a negative. So that means that we're never going to see this one be equal to 0. That makes sense, because no matter what number you plug in for x, you'll always have some positive number, because it's squared, or 0 plus 1 third. So it's always going to be a number in the denominator. This means that our domain restriction is just from negative infinity to infinity. So there is no restriction, essentially. And there's the solution. Just to let you know what that simplifying that you could do if you wanted to is, what you could do is you could factor out a 1 sixth out of the bottom. So then you would have negative 1 over 1 sixth times x squared plus 2, because 2 times 1 sixth would produce that 1 third. And then negative 1 over 1 over 6, that's really just negative 6. So on the top, you would have negative 6 over x squared plus 2. So your answer would be y is equal to 2 minus 6 over x squared plus 2. Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to 3x squared over e to the power of 2y. Part A says find a solution y equals f of x to the differential equation satisfying the initial condition f of 0 is equal to 1 half. First, let's separate the variables. So I'm going to bring all of the y's over to the left-hand side. So I will have e to the power of 2y dy. And then I'll multiply both sides by dx to get 3x squared dx on the right side. Then I will integrate. On this side, I'm going to need to use u substitution because I have another function, 2y, stuck inside the e to the power of something function. So u will be equal to 2y. This means that du dy is equal to 2. So du is equal to 2 times dy, or 1 half du is equal to dy. 
So therefore, when I rewrite this, I will have integral of e to the power of u, but then instead of writing dy, I'll write 1 half du. The 1 half I can pull out and the du will go there. Then on the right hand side, I will have 3x cubed over 3 plus c once I integrate. And then once I integrate on this side, I will have 1 half e to the power of u, and u is really just 2y, and that's all equal to x cubed plus c. Now I will take my initial condition. f of 0 is equal to 1 half. I will go through and plug in 0 for x and 1 half for y. Then to solve that, that's 1 half e to the power of 1 is equal to 0 plus c. e to the power of 1 is just e, so we have e over 2 is equal to c, or c is equal to e over 2. Then I will take that equation that I had right before, which was 1 half e to the power of 2y is equal to x cubed plus c, but instead of writing c, I will write e over 2. Then I will multiply both sides by 2, because at this point I'm trying to isolate y. Multiply both sides by 2, and you get e to the power of 2y is equal to 2x cubed plus e. And then to get rid of this e, I will take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of e to the power of 2y is equal to the natural log of 2x cubed plus e. The natural log and the e will cancel over here, and I will have 2y is equal to the natural log of 2x cubed plus e. Then I can divide both sides by 2, and I'll get that y is equal to the natural log of 2x cubed plus e all over 2. That would be my solution. And normally I would go find the domain restrictions here, but part B specifically asks me to find the domain and range of this function found in part A. To find the domain of the function, I will need to think if there are any situations where it will be undefined. Well, I know that I cannot take the natural log of a number that is less than or equal to zero, therefore 2x cubed plus e needs to be greater than zero. And then I can solve that inequality for x. 2x cubed needs to be greater than negative e, x cubed needs to be greater than negative e over 2, and x needs to be greater than the cube root of negative e over 2. So that would be my domain restriction. And then for my range, I need to think if there's anything that would potentially limit my y. So on this side of the equation, it's only x's. So let me look back again at my original differential equation. We have 3x squared over e to the power of 2y. This should not be equal to 0 because that's in the denominator. So for the range, e to the power of 2y should not be equal to 0. However, when I try to take the natural log of both sides to cancel out the e, natural log of e to the power of 2y is natural log of 0, you can't take the natural log of 0. So that's undefined. That means that e to the power of 2y will never be equal to 0. Therefore, my range can be all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. There's my solution. Now we will practice a few multiple choice questions. If dy dx is equal to 2x over y squared, then y could be, I'm noticing that I'm not getting any initial condition here, so this is probably going to be some type of general solution problem. So I'm going to go find the general solution of this equation. First, I will separate the variables. So y squared dy on the left-hand side, if you multiply both sides by y squared, and then 2x dx on the right-hand side. Then when you integrate, you will get y cubed over 3 is equal to 2x squared over 2 plus c. Now I'm going to work to isolate y because it says y could be what? So if I multiply all of the terms in there by 3, I will get that y cubed is equal to 3x squared plus 3c. But 3 times a constant is still just a constant. So I'm just going to leave that as a constant like that. Then I will take the cube root of both sides. So when I take the cube root of both sides, I will get that y is equal to the cube root of 3x squared plus c. However, when I look over at my answers, none of these have a c in them. They all just have numbers in them. So it says y could be, meaning that maybe like y could be one of these if the initial condition was something or other. So I'm just going to pick the one that matches my equation but has a number plugged in for c. In that case, it would be choice a the cube root of 3x squared minus 1. So it looks like in this case, they, they assign c to be negative 1 right here. Therefore, a is the correct answer. If dy dt is equal to 4y, and if y is equal to 9 when t is equal to 0, what is the value of t for which y is equal to 1? First, I'm going to separate my variables. I'm going to divide both sides by y, and then I will have 1 over y dy on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I will be left with a 4, and if I multiplied both sides by t, I would have 4 dt. 
Then I will take the integral of both sides. The integral of one over y dy is the natural log of the absolute value of y, and the integral of four with respect to t will be four t plus c. Now that I have integrated, I need to plug in my initial condition to solve for c. So I know that y is equal to nine when t is equal to zero. So I will plug in nine for y, natural log of the absolute value of nine is equal to, and then I will plug in zero for t, four times zero plus c, so just c. This means that c is equal to the natural log of nine. And I can remove those absolute value bars because nine is a positive number and it's never going to change to become a negative number. Then I take my original equation, which was the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to four t plus, but instead of c, I write natural log of nine. Now I need to work to isolate y. So I will put an e beneath each one of these to cancel out the natural log. The e and the natural log cancel and I'm left with absolute value of y is equal to e to the power of 4t plus the natural log of 9. Now I'm going to simplify this side of it. Absolute value of y is equal to e to the power of 4t times e to the power of the natural log of 9. We can do that using our exponent properties. Because they were being added, we can multiply these two and spread out the base. Now, e to the power of the natural log of nine, the reason why I split that one apart is because this is just nine. The e and the natural log cancel, and we will have absolute value of y is equal to nine e to the power of four t. Then to get rid of the absolute value bars here, I will say y is equal to plus or minus nine e to the power of four t. But because this is a particular solution, it's either going to be a plus or a minus. We cannot have both stuck on the beginning there. We need to figure out which one is it. In this case, we know that it's going to be y is equal to 9e to the power of 4t and not negative 9e to the power of 4t because we look at our initial condition and it says when t is equal to 0, so when we have e to the power of 4 times 0 or e to the power of 0, which is 1, y needs to be equal to 9, so 9 times 1, positive 9 times 1. That is the one that works. If we had a negative 9 out here, this would be negative 9 times 1, and when t was equal to 0, y would be negative 9, but we need it to be positive. So this is the correct equation. But that's not what it's asking for. It's saying what is the value of t for which y is equal to one? So now I will plug in one for y and see what happens. One is equal to nine e to the power of four t. Divide both sides by nine and you will get e to the power of four t is equal to one ninth. Then take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of e to the power of four t is equal to the natural log of one ninth. The natural log in the e over here will cancel and you'll have 4t is equal to, and then we can spread this out using our logarithm division property. So natural log of one minus the natural log of nine. We can do that. The natural log of one is equal to zero. So this is really zero minus the natural log of nine or just the negative natural log of nine. This means that t is equal to negative ln of nine over four, which matches answer choice C. Suppose the graph of y equals f of x passes through the point 0, negative 8, and dy dx is equal to 2x over y e to the power of x squared for all x. What is f of x? First, I'm going to separate the variables. If I multiply both sides by y, I get that y dy is equal to 2x over e to the power of x squared dx, if I also multiply both sides by dx. And then on this side, I don't like that I have this fraction here. I'm going to rewrite this as 2x e to the power of negative x squared. Now I can integrate both sides. When I integrate y dy, that's just going to be y squared over 2. But then when I integrate this side, I have a problem. I'm going to try the u substitution here because this is not a function that's going to integrate super nicely. I'm going to say let u be equal to negative x squared because negative x squared is what's stuck inside the function e to the power of x. So u is equal to negative x squared. This means that du dx would be negative 2x and du would be equal to negative 2x dx. Now I see that I have a 2x dx over here, but I don't have a negative 2x dx. So I'll just move the negative over to the other side. Negative du is equal to 2x dx. So when I swap out this 2x dx, I will do a negative du. So that's the integral of e to the power of u because u is negative x squared and then negative du. I'll bring the negative out to the front, negative e to the u du. Then I can integrate. 
y squared over 2 is equal to negative e to the power of u, or negative e to the power of negative x squared plus c. Now remember, as soon as you integrate, that's when you want to plug in your initial condition. So I will plug in 0 for x and negative 8 for y. So negative 8 squared over 2 is equal to negative e to the power of negative x squared. Negative 0 squared is just 0, so negative e to the power of 0 plus c. This would be 64 halves, or 64 over 2 is equal to negative 1 plus c. And 64 over 2, that will be 32. So then 32 plus 1, c is equal to 33. So then I rewrite y squared over 2 is equal to negative e to the power of negative x squared plus 33. Multiply both sides by 2 because now we're working to isolate y and you get y squared is equal to negative 2e to the power of negative x squared plus 66. And then take the square root of both sides. y is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 2e to the power of negative x squared plus 66. Now, we need to figure out, is it the plus or is it the minus? Because we can't have both when we're solving for a particular solution. We know that when x is equal to 0, y will be equal to negative 8. So when x is equal to 0, let's just think about what we would have under the radical there. We would have negative 2e to the power of 0 plus 66. That's negative 2 times 1, or negative 2 plus 66, which is really just 64. So do we need it to be positive rad 64, or do we need it to be negative rad 64 when x is equal to 0? Well, we need it to be negative rad 64 when x is equal to 0 because we have a negative 8 there. Therefore, y is really going to be equal to negative rad of negative 2e to the power of negative x squared plus 66. So then let's choose the appropriate answer. In this case, it looks like a is the correct answer, even though they swapped around the 66 and the negative 2e to the power of negative x squared, those are equivalent.